If not, any changes? Any from staff? Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? Second. Okay. Move and support it. Is there some discussion? Um, didn't you want to remove item number three under discussion? <laughs> oh, I think we'll just leave it on to indicate we received a report and we'll study it. Hmm? We're not going to okay. do anything with it. We won't talk about it. Um, so, okay. any other comments? If not, all in favor to keep by saying aye. Aye. The agenda, or opposed. Sorry. The agenda is approved. Next, we have approval of the minutes of our May 8th meeting. You've all had an opportunity to look at the minutes. Several items on tonight's agenda uh, were discussed, and we have reports now on most of the items. Is there any motion to approve? Can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Move supported that the minutes of the May 8th meeting as distributed uh, be approved as, as distributed. All in favor in case I say no. aye. Opposed? Uh, the minutes are approved. On, page, on pages 8 through 14, you have vouchers for the Public Service Department operations. And we will need a motion to approve them. But is there any comments, questions? I'll move to approve. I'll second. Move supported that the vouchers be approved. That's vouchers 13,072 to 13,079. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all in favor? We keep by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? So the vouchers are approved. Item 7 is review of the statements of revenues and expenses for May 2012. We normally, thought we normally just receive this, uh, but if there are any questions, please feel free to ask them. Any questions? I, I do have a question. Okay. Uh, what page, Jim? Uh, page 18. The uh, upper quadrant, it's just noticed that the uniform allowance, uh, we're up to 142% of the budget already. Uh, I was just wondering what took place and are we going to, you know. Jim, I'm going to have to find out from Ann myself because I have this one underlined and I, I don't know, but we should not be over the budget on the uniform allowance. So I have it underlined in red. I'm going to check with her and see what, what it's about. Sure. And this basically is just for a few of them. How many people does this cover in our um, Five? Three. Three? Yeah, we lost three. Yeah, that's right. Four. Well, they each, you know, they each get a thousand dollars a year uh, clothing allowance. Um, well, that's probably. Well, if they each get a thousand by contract, that explains it, because the twenty-one hundred was the amended budget and. Uh, but, I, but at this point, I don't know why it should be over because we know what that is year after year. So I, it, I need to find out why it shows it being okay. over in the budget. Fine. Okay. Any other questions? If not, we will receive and file the uh, statements of revenues and expenses. Next, that does require action is our treasurer's report for May 1st of 2012. And on the back of the report, as I always mention, we have the Fund balances for um, drains, our bike paths, both construction and maintenance, and our road improvement fund. I'll entertain a motion to receive and accept the treasury report. So moved. Second. I'm supportive that the treasury report be received. Uh, well, uh, I have a comment I'd like to make before we take action. Um, and I'll open it up. Does anybody else have a question or comment? Uh, my, my questions are, and Ted, maybe you can help with this. Uh, the storm drain uh, has gone up, and I assume that's because we had another year's collection that was posted. That's correct. Uh, the bike path fund, uh, I noticed we've done a tremendous amount of work in uh, uh, seal coating our bike paths, and they really look nice. Did anybody notice that? Mm -hmm. So I want to compliment Barry and the the staff for getting that done. Um, I don't. I suppose that expense hasn't been uh, posted yet. No, from it hasn't. Maintenance portion of it. Now the construction amount uh, will all be used up to build the horse mill bike trail, right? 
Yes. And can I just ask where that stands? Um, right now, we are kind of waiting for Wayne County. There's been a change of staff at the Wayne County level that has the jurisdiction over these kind of funds. When we met with the county about a month and a half ago, um, there was some support from the people that we met with. The head of Roads Division was going to help us in getting some either funds to help us with the Park Lane Horse Mill intersection or they were going to do some of the work themselves. Well, they took it back to the higher ups, and the higher ups did not agree with what they had told us. So they basically backed out of what they they didn't agree to do it, but they were going to look into doing it. But the higher up is no longer with them. As of a week ago Friday, he retired. So now they're going to fill the position he was in. And we've been kind of standing by to see who that is and maybe this person would be a little bit more favorable to our needs. Um, Wally probably knows Hassan retired. So um, we're kind of waiting to see who that is, but it does not look very good for us at this point in time to get any money from Wayne County or assistance from the construction standpoint at this time. I talked to Ken Cousell the day before yesterday, and I asked him about backing some of that work out of the contract. In other words, take the Park Lane Road intersection and remove it from the bike path construction to reduce our costs. And he said that would be something that they would they could take a look at and do. Um, but whether we would want to do that or not, I don't know. I guess the questions I wanted to ask is the amount of money we have for construction, the 393000 that's not enough to... No. Right now it's a $400,000 project. Well, we're at 393, isn't it? We're at 319. Huh? We're at 319. Oh, less than Meridian School. Is that the idea? Less than Meridian School, 319. Um, one question I have is Wayne County, in its review of our permit and the requirements they imposed, and maybe you or Ted might know this, but did they impose uh, this additional cost, or were we trying to build something that we didn't have enough money for? What what they did during the design process is they told us that due to the fact that the bike path ran down Horse Mill all the way to Park Lane, when it got to Park Lane, it had to go someplace. So we had to cross Horse Mill to the south and leave it basically end at that point. And then crossing the road opened up the drainage issue that's on Park Lane and Horse Mill as well as some of the intersection actual pavement improvements that they, the county wanted. Basically, it's a way for Wayne County, in, in, in my opinion, is to get some road improvement and some drainage put in place and something that actually belongs to them. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that there is a drainage issue at Park Lane and Horse Mill that's been there for a long time and it should be addressed. But that's basically how it stands right now. Uh, Barry, if, if, if they ended it before there, could they do that? Could we shorten it up just to, to make it, our... It, it, when I talked to Ken the, uh, yesterday, um, he indicated, I asked him that question. I said, in order to avoid the expenses at Horse Mill and Park Lane, if we back that intersection part of the work out, shorten up the bike path, could we eliminate that area? He said that's something that they would take a look at. And he sounded like he would kind of be favorable in, in that respect. But he's only one person that has to go through the additional... But it's something we could look into. Or here's another suggestion. There's a lot of drainage costs involved with that bike path. Yes. Um, to make up the difference, there's always the possibility of using some drainage money. Well, that's what I was going to ask us to talk about. Um, Frank, I'd like you to talk. You, you seem to be very familiar, maybe Phil Kennedy is too, about the drainage problem at that location. If there's a drainage problem, if we really want to proceed with this, um, sir, you're welcome to stay. At, at, okay. All right. Uh, we had one person in the audience and decided to <laughs> scare them away. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I don't know, uh, Ted or anybody else can voice an opinion on this, but if we truly will solve a drainage problem at the intersection, uh, should we consider uh, using some drain monies to, I mean, that's what the drain fund is for, 
to deal with drainage issues. So I'll just leave it at that and open it for discussion. Mr. Chairman, we very definitely have a drainage problem there. Park Lane floods across after a heavy, heavy rain, as does the lawn of the Gross Hill Presbyterian Church. That culvert is now probably eight to ten foot wide in spots because of the erosion due to all the water that sits in there following a heavy rain and as it drains off it erodes the culvert. So I think I think definitely something needs to be done there. Would you would you favor using drain runners for that? I certainly would. Uh, Barry, can you explain what is the what is the drain improvement that the county proposes to add to the project do to drain that area? Okay without having a print in front of me to take a look at, but basically what it is, is that entire intersection on all four corners has a drainage problem. Right now when it rains in the spring of the year and the fall of the year, that area just is standing water. If I remember correctly, the drainage that would be put in place on that intersection would actually drain north on Park Lane on the west side to a uh, outlet that's further north down Park Lane from the horse mill intersection. So that would be the outlet for that drainage in, in that particular area. And of course it would cross the roads at that intersection to pick up probably all four corners. Um, but it does, it does flow north on Park Lane, or it will when they're, when they're through. It's supposed to flow north on Park Lane. But yes. That culvert's plugged up around the first driveway. Mm -hmm. it, it, some time ago, there was a, years ago, um, there was a preliminary plan to correct that issue by running a storm sewer down Horse Mill West on the north side to the canal. But at that particular time, the township and Wayne County together did not have the, the funds and stuff necessary to do it. But it was looked at from that aspect two years ago. Mr. Chair. <clears throat> yes. I think before we commit Rocio Drain funds to this project, we got a pretty strong commitment from uh, Wayne County. We had a meeting. They were going to handle this issue. Yes. They were going to resolve it. Mm -hmm. This is what Wayne County drains, and I, I think we need to get together again with these people and try to put their feet to the fire rather than spend our money to do their job. <clears throat> Uh, so I, I'm certainly not in favor of making any motions or taking any steps to use our drain funds until we have another meeting with Wayne County. I mean, they already committed to do this, so they didn't think it was a problem. Now we're getting stonewalled again by them. Mm -hmm. and I think we need to, again, go after them to fix their drain problems. Uh, <clears throat> maybe it takes some residents complaining or whatever it takes to get this thing done. Mm -hmm. or the Presbyterian Church complaining to get there because I know <clears throat> there was a few complaints up on Elba which is a little street the size of a driveway and they came in and redid all the drains on Elba whether you needed it or not <laughs> tore everybody's lawn up but they I, I think if pressure is put on them they'll do this and I don't think we ought to put our money into it until we're absolutely sure we can't get Wayne County to take care of their own work I mean, it's bad enough they're throwing all this road work on us. I hate to start taking over their drains, too. Well, I think, <clears throat> I have two comments, Ted. I think, number one, I agree with what you just said. What I was going to propose is that um, with, the, with this thought in mind, that you go back to the county and uh, without any, any commitment on our part, um, see what the discussion, uh, what it leads to, but come back to this commission with some uh, suggestion if you do need some of the drain monies and if you feel that the, that's the only thing that's going to uh, proceed. Now, on the other hand, if they decide to eliminate the fix at the intersection uh, by the county not doing anything and then just cut that short off our, our bike path project, um, we still have a problem that affects our property owners. The only question I have then is if they're not going to fix it, should we? I mean, we can always ask the question later instead of today. But uh, and, and so my thought is, um, just uh, we've had this discussion. With that in the back of your heads, go back and 
see when you can arrange for this discussion and bring it back. But, you know, um, uh, maybe we won't commit, maybe we will, but the drain monies are to solve drainage problems um, that aren't going to be solved by anybody else. So if it's affecting the church and the safety at the intersection, maybe we have to look at it. Uh, maybe not. We don't know enough about it. Um, that's that's kind of my thought. Mr. Chair, I kind of agree in spirit with all of this. I believe strongly that the county is not taking care of business when it comes to our main roads. Uh, you've heard me up here a hundred times say that the uh, the millage that we propose for repairs to roads is and always was philosophically for our smaller roads and that we wanted to hold the county's feet to the fire on roads. I think we need to hold the county's feet to the fire on their drains on main roads too. Let's fix our subdivision drainage problems with our own funds, but let's make the county fix their big ones. Well, that's helpful and that clarifies uh, some things. Uh, so, any other comments? I just <coughs> have one other comment. Do you plan, I'm talking directly to Mr. Barry, do you plan on attending the new bike path super committee or whatever they're called um, on Monday? I was not invited. Well, we have an issue here <laughs> because of the funding. We're sitting here with bike path funds, and there's a bike path committee or commission mm -hmm. that reports directly to the board. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> I think at some point in time we should probably establish the guidelines for this committee. I mean, if they're going to bother to meet, uh, know whether or not this portion of the funding, which would include bike path and bike path maintenance, stay with this commission or goes to the super committee for bike paths and walking trails or whatever. Because <coughs> we're going to start making decisions here with money that maybe we're not directing that money, I don't know. Okay. And I would strongly urge that maybe you attend their meeting. I can do that. I can do that. As I understand it, the maintenance portion of the bike path funds will still probably be worked through the DPS. Um, I, I would hope so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's probably. In fact, they're they're talk, talking to me now regarding the project that we're just wrapping up right, with the seal coating and the crack sealing. And I, I've been in touch with Eric through Dale. Um, so that part of it, they're getting through me. Whether they, as far as the planning for the new bike path and um, if, if if this commission sees that I that I should be there, I'll be there. Well, I, I just think that there's some, we're talking about issues here that we may not have jurisdiction over on the bike path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it, there's no sense in getting redundant. No, right now they seem to be looking still in my direction for the uh, the, the solution for the installation of the new bike path. Okay. Right. Um, so, you know. And that's why I suggested maybe you should yeah. either be at that meeting or have some kind of conversation with them to mm -hmm. see which way they're going because this committee currently has no funds. Um, so when is their meeting, Ted? I think it's Monday, isn't it? You know, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look in the I think Eric made that statement last Next time. Monday? I believe he said it was Monday. Okay. You can check. I'll it find out when it is. Yeah. I'll, I'll go. It should be posted. Just just to go beyond that, I would suggest that maybe you ought to give them a copy of the treasurer's report so that they know what kind of money they have or don't have. Anybody have a problem with that? No, I think it's a great idea. Okay. All right, any further discussion on that bike path, bike path funds at this point? And um, we've covered the drain fund. We're going to talk about some drain projects in a minute. And then uh, we finally have posted the tax collection for 2011 for the four-tenths of a mill for road maintenance, uh, $225,000. So um, any questions on the treasurer's report? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the Treasurer's Report. Second. Move and supported that the Treasurer's Report for May 2012 be approved as distributed. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Treasurer's Report is approved. Um, we have a Manager's Report coming up, but before we do, we have two people in the audience. Joe, welcome. 
And sir, is there any business you, you're just here to observe? Welcome. Yeah. If you want to comment on something, you're welcome to get my attention then. Okay. I think there's agendas on that table next to you too. So, uh, With that, um, Barry, uh, manager's report. Okay. Uh, item number one on the manager's report is the uh, county-sponsored household hazardous waste collection. Uh, it's going to be held on Saturday, June the 23rd at the Henry Ford Community College, and that's located at 5101 Evergreen Road in Dearborn. Um, as you know, periodically Wayne County holds these uh, hazardous waste collections in different parts of Wayne County. They're at no charge to Wayne County residents. Um, these, this is also posted on our website for people that want to get information. But basically, some examples of what they will take are household paints, stains, dyes, floor wax, floor care products, carpet cleaners, pharmaceutical waste, non-controlled substances only, uh, fertilizer, lawn, garden chemicals, pesticides, antifreeze, motor oil, gasoline, uh, automotive batteries, fluorescent bulbs, fire extinguishers, smoke detectors, mercury thermometers, um, thermostats and elemental mercury. Um, electronics is also involved. They'll take computers, CPUs, monitors, printers, scanners, keyboards, cell phones, fax machines, copiers, and televisions. Um, only household generated products from Wayne County residents will be accepted. So if, if anyone would like further information on this, they can call our office. We'd be happy to give it to them. And I think it's also posted on uh, Grosio Township's webpage. Okay. Item number two is a status update on the drainage project on Wilbur and South Point. Um, as you recall, some time ago, um, well, actually, it's in our, our budget for this year, is to address um, the drainage issue in that area. Uh, I was requested to get uh, engineering cost estimates and some preliminary drawings showing what could be done in the area to eliminate the drainage issue. And in front of you here, you have three options. These are the three that I obtained from our engineering company, CE Rains. Um, what this basically boils down to as you can see in the backyard, the drainage issue that needs to be taking place, these different cost estimates um, are based on that there's a different route that has to be used to drain these, this backyard in this particular case. Um, what we're going to do probably is take this based on the cost using the lowest uh, cost estimate first and we have to contact a couple of the residents in each one of these areas to see if we can get an easement to go through their property uh, to run a pipe to drain that backyard area. So we'll, like I say, we'll start with the, the, the lowest estimate first, um, contact the two residents that are going to be involved to obtain possible easement to go through there, and if that one fails, we'll move to option number two um, and do the same thing. So it, it, if we can get the cooperation from the residents in the area, I think we can, we can go a long ways in eliminating a, a, a major drainage problem in that area for these people that they've been uh, putting up with for a long, long time. So that, that's Who's basically that? where that's... Who's yard floods, Ted? Uh, um, there's, about, there's about six or seven houses involved in that area that actually flood. Um, and if you can see, let me choose one of these that I can show you. Um, <coughs> option number one, for example, if you want to take a look at the, the map of that one, the aerial, that red line is the proposed route for the drainage. And where that originates behind those house, houses, you can see that particular area probably within the a half a dozen of those houses, a couple of them facing South Point and about two or three of them facing Albemarle, that whole area back there floods. So we're talking about page 30, right? Uh, I'm looking at page 28, actually. Page 28. They're all, they're all 
all they're, they're all, all the same aerial. It's just that the different, uh, different diagrams routes. show different routes of the drainage. So where the two catch basins are in the rear yards? Is the, yeah, is basically. The point in the flooded. Yes, basically the one on the end is the pro is the low point of that whole area. In those houses collectively, there's about five of them right there that would benefit by that drain being there. Um, right now, we've been over there in the spring of the year. There's probably two and a half, three feet of water in those backyards. And it, we've been taking a pump over to help them when we have a heavy rain that occurs. We actually take a pump over, then we pump it into the ditch on Elbomart to help alleviate their problem. So it's, it, this has been there for a long time. Uh, it's just an it's just an issue that the you know the commission has decided to move forward with. Does anybody know what the history is? Why these houses were built the way they were, and why the drainage was? Uh, you know, I I don't to be honest with you, uh, I John. Wonder if anybody does. I, I don't know. I know it's been an ongoing problem for a long time. Um, Joe just said Les probably knows the history. Yeah, well, they've been there a long time, those homes, too. Yeah. So, yeah. I, mean, I know we've been working with this. Probably right, Joe. I, I know we've been working with this issue ourselves, myself, for probably the last seven or eight years. Um, so it, it probably started long before that. Okay, so we budgeted $50,000. Uh, two of these are under that, and one is at 50. Uh, anybody have a book? Where do you want to go? You're just reporting to us and you're going to proceed? Yes. Uh, I guess um, this will appear on our next month's agenda because you're going to have to meet with these people, try to get this done so it can be, we haven't bid it out yet. No, no. And it's going to be disruptive if you do the work in August, they can plant the grass back in uh, uh, September or October and wrap the project up. So. That should be our goal. Yeah. Our, our next step basically is to contact the residents involved that we need the easements from. And depending on how receptive they are to that, this project could go along rather rapidly if we could get that. I'd like to suggest one thing. Maybe you invite them all to your office at 4 o'clock one day or something of that sort and try to get them all together and try to work your way through this. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Barry, I have a question. Sure. Is the drain, the proposed drain we're going to on Albemarle, is that a closed drain or just a ditch? It's a closed drain. It is a closed drain yes. and it runs to It goes the canal? Yes. It runs there. It ends up in Frenchman's Creek. And that uh, in option number one, the least expensive option that looks to be right in the middle of somebody's driveway. Yes. That is on the Wayne County easement? Yes, that's in the right of way. I would certainly suggest that you talk to these people also. Yeah. Even though they're not affected in the drain, they are going to be affected yep. by the work. And, and if this were the option that we chose, that manhole being in their driveway, we probably would have to remove and replace their driveway. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just so that they're involved too. Uh, sure. All right. Um, any further comments on this? Well, I guess that my... my uh, just to keep it moving, Barry, you got to put this on our July agenda. Sure. Your, your I can give you an findings update. Sure. And recommendation. Sure. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. Next the, item. The next item is the uh, update on the traffic counts. Uh, as, you'll re as you'll recall, a couple months ago, the commission instructed me to hire a company to do a traffic count. It was determined. Uh, that these were the eight locations that we wanted the counter set up. And this one sheet basically is kind of a summary of, um, of that traffic count. You'll see the locations on the left um, and then the 24 hour uh, average daily traffic volume in that second column. And then the one on the right is actually the average speed that <coughs> is being driven on those roads as these uh, traffic counters were installed. And the one that comes to my mind is Ferry Road, 33 miles an hour down Ferry Road. <laughs> That's moving along pretty good for, 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 that, for that street. It, it has to be wrong then, I guess, while well, I have to check on that. <laughs> but anyway, that's, I think, Bill, is that this is the information that you wanted? 
Yeah, it's, it's uh, very illuminating. I, I hope that during the three days we took the counts in May, which is May 13th to 16th, the school was in session those days. That's correct. It was during midweek. Um, I thought some of them would be a little higher. It seemed to me that on Church Road, we had some old data the county gave us that was probably 10 years old now, that they were over 3,000 vehicles a day. Mm -hmm. But um, that could have been on a Sunday, too. Who knows? Um, at any rate, it is what it is. What, um, what do you think we should do with this data, Commissioner? I thought one thought I had is Ted, should we send it on to as an information item to the uh, trustees? We don't have to do it today. We could do it later. Should we post it uh, uh, just for information on, on our bulletin board here at the Township Hall, or what do you think we should do with it? Any thoughts? Certainly, we need it, but I don't know that it helps us with the low volumes. Some of these volumes are fairly low. A lot of silence. Well, I, I would think that I would think that we could put it as a discussion item on township next township board meeting. Barry could present the data to the township board. Uh, but I would think we need to give it to them for some direction. I mean, it's, it's great. It's great information. I wasn't thinking, I don't know what to discuss with it. We, we wanted to know what kind of volumes we had on our roads. And it's good data to have, but it doesn't help us at this point with anything. Mr. Chairman, yep. uh, I, uh, I think it, it might be better served to just uh, post it up on the board, uh, only because uh, the chance to misinterpret what what this means by them, you know, by by people who aren't used to this, uh, you don't know where it could take you, or what they could be asking to do, or what uh, would come of it. Um, All right. Well, why don't we? Um, we we have a fairly recent count. The township has a fairly recent count of the paid bridge crossings. Mm -hmm. about three Dale has old, those. Three or four years old. Yes, in probably different locations than these. So we could combine those two, sure. J just for data gathering, mm -hmm. so we have the information we need. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure where to go with this. Uh, well, maybe we ought to just hold it for now, and you could put it up on your wall in your outer by your lobby there, just as information, and and uh, just not send it to anybody formally until we decide what we want to do with it. That's probably a good thought, Jim. Yeah, I think it's important that we combine the bridge flow of the paper also with this information. And that's fairly recent. It's not real old. Uh, well, we don't, but we do have uh, I don't think we Gross do. Hill Parkway west of Meridian. That's your large count. Yeah. Uh, the only... That's going to be the bridge. Yeah, that's all the bridge traffic. Except for those people that turn off and go down West River. West River, I was just looking to see. Well, it's data we wanted for, we've talked about it for a couple of years, so um, why don't we receive and file it at this point, post it by your, all right. your window. Wasn't this data that we asked for when we were talking about repairing our major roads? Yes. Instead of the secondary and smaller roads? Right. Right. But, but in the greater mix of uh, all the road traffic volumes in Wayne County, um, we, we, this doesn't shed great light on our problems. So when you compare this to Fort Street, or <laughs> yeah, all right. Let's. Any problem with just receiving and filing at this point? No. Okay. Well, we're receiving file. Thank you. Okay. Um, item number four is the Park Lane Elementary School drain. Um, as you requested, uh, we had uh, our engineers go over and, and uh, do some uh, topo work and see what a possible solution would be for the drainage of the ball diamond at the Park Lane Elementary School. 
and what you have in front of you is a diagram showing uh, what could be done to drain the water and also a cost estimate. Um, it looks like the red line on page 35 would go into a existing uh, storm sewer manhole. It goes in where you see the split. That's where an end section would be placed and from that point north toward the school it would be just a swaled area. There would be no pipe in that particular area. But the red line, the solid red line, would be a 12 inch culvert pipe. Yeah. Uh, this was a project that I talked about at the time we did our April drive through the community. And um, I know that that ball diamond is, I don't know if the schools use it, but it was used by the Little League. And, uh, for the last few years, they haven't been able to use it at the start of the season because the whole pack. Uh, stop areas been underwater and without any drainage. Now, uh, history might show that maybe the schools at some time uh, contributed to this problem. What I'd like to do with this is um, I would like to, in the next 30 days, form a sub subcommittee immediately and in the next 30 days um, uh, go and meet with the schools and our engineer on the site and discuss this project and, and see what. Um, um, See what, see what the schools might want to contribute to this. Um, uh, my thought is it's very unsightly. There's a berm that was created, and I don't know the history. Jim, you may know the history of that. The, the tree stands between the berm from behind the curb line, the sidewalk. There's a sidewalk there now. Uh, the tree stand is all dead and very unsightly. Most of them fall over, fallen over into the drain, whatever drain there was. There's standing water there. It's not healthy. And um, like I say, in, in May, that ball field is rendered almost uh, non-usable. So um, I'd like to have a committee do that with the engineer and, and, the, and come back at our July meeting. And I would, uh, I know, Jim, you live in that area. I'd like to see if yeah. you'd be willing to serve on that committee. And I'd be happy Ted, would to. you be willing to serve on that with, along with me? Sure. Okay, so we have a subcommittee of Jim Budney and Ted, and uh, um, we'll make arrangements, and I'll take the lead on trying to do that. Okay. Um, yeah, this is uh, by far the best this firm has ever looked uh, in this picture. Uh, it's 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 very unsightly. I was going to ask Barry, do you know if in this? Uh, this estimate, it, uh, somewhere in there, it is taking that berm out of there? It's I, not. No. It's not. No, no, there's there's no around it. No, there's in fact, no no, this doesn't even remove any of the trees except where the swale would go. Yeah, okay. And so it, this is a short budget. It's not a sufficient amount, in my opinion, but I'd like to see what the schools have to say about it. I think from the, a broader perspective than just the schools, it's something we ought to be looking at. I mean, we ask people to landscape their yards and take care of their property. For everybody that lives by Sacred Heart or by Park Lane School, it's an unsightly mess. Very true. It shouldn't be there. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, ask Mr. Uh, Jim a question. Weren't these, isn't this berm the spoils from that parking lot construction? It, it is. It is. When they did their improvement at uh, Park Lane, they took all the dirt and made that berm rather than carrying the dirt away. So their new their new parking lot uh, and around and everything they did around the school, they just piled the dirt up there. Now, is that on the school property, Wayne County? I'd oh. say the bulk of it's yeah, it's on the school's property. Yeah, I would I would say the bulk of it is. Mm -hmm. But did they block the drain? Looks like they did. It sure looks like they they blocked the flow. Well, we've got one issue that the reason we need to really concentrate on this is when that sidewalk goes through there, we're getting some undermining of that sidewalk mm -hmm. and Absolutely. getting some deterioration of the drain and at that particular point because of the water literally running under the sidewalk. Yes. I went down and ran over it. I think a lot of it's running under it. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to lose a section of that sidewalk if we don't do something pretty quick. Yeah, it's already undermined. You can put your hand under it. Yeah, I know. And that's that portion of it. I think it's urgent that we make some decision, regardless of which way we go with the school, we got to repair that. 
But if we don't fix the drain problem, it's just going to repeat. Okay. All right. So in the spirit of trying to get some of these things done, we have a subcommittee. Unless there's any objection, we'll arrange for a meeting as soon as we can so that we can bring a report back. Uh, what we're going to do, I suggest be done at this location at our next meeting. It will be on the agenda. Just uh, a couple of questions. The obvious impetus to do this is the drainage problem. Has there been a concern issue or, or a concern uh, stated from the school about the drainage problem? Or are they kind of looking no, at the No, this is, I had a personal experience with the Little League two years ago. And, um, and since then it's gotten worse. Uh, I was brought out there on a Saturday by some of the parents and showed, it, showed me what the, uh, there were three inches of water right where the, the kids sit, sit down. And um, the whole backstop area was unplayable. And, um, and then I noticed after that that the sidewalk was undermined where we put the new Safe Routes to School sidewalk in. I, I appreciate all that. I, I really do. But I guess what I'm saying is if this was my backyard and I moved all of the dirt in my backyard and blocked the drainage from my neighbors to the sewer, which is at the back line, uh, my neighbors would be upset and expecting me to do something about it. And uh, the, the township would be sending out an enforcement officer telling me I couldn't modify my grade like that. Uh, I think we've got to get some buy-in from the school. And it's not... Well, that's, not that's, yeah. that's our hope. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I've actually I've had uh, some discussions uh, uh, just in passing with uh, with the school board, uh, the residents, and uh, and parents have brought this problem up to them, and that they're they're very aware of it. Now they didn't they didn't share with me, you know, what what if anything was being done, but they are aware of the problem. So uh, people are complaining to the school, as you know. Uh, that that was my point. Is it is it coming off from us or is it? coming from a different venue the people that use it from the school. If it's coming from that way, I, I would anticipate some participation in mm -hmm. fixing it. That's what our hope is. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments about this project? Okay, so any thing with the recording secretary, you understand what we're doing? Mm -hmm. Any, any further discussion on manager reports there? No, I don't know. Unless okay, someone sorry. has something. Huh? Sort of took over your manager's report. Yeah, there. That's okay. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm all set. Uh, the next discussion item is a proposal from Waste Management uh, for our, our refuse contractor for a contract extension. Barry? Yes, as you know, our contract, uh, we had a five-year contract with, um, well, it ended up with waste management, but it originally, originally started with capital, and uh, they sold their assets to uh, waste management about two years ago, two and a half years ago. So since that time, waste management has been collecting our refuse. Um, their contract terminates November the 15th of this year. Um, they have contacted me on a couple of occasions and that's what you have in front of you um, that's a proposal that they sent to me to carry on to the commission um, as a proposal to extend their contract their current contract and basically what it is in a nutshell a summary is they will hold their current rates for two additional years the rate that we're paying right now and as you can see on page uh, 39 is kind of a breakdown of what it is right now at the top of the page you'll see where it says 11 14 2012 this is what we're currently paying uh, about six hundred nine thousand dollars a year for our trash removal and as you carry it down the extension proposal um, they will hold it for two additional years at the 239 uh, per unit per month rate and then in the third year it, the township would have the option 
of extending it an additional year and there would you'll see the you see the rate that they're holding there for the third year if you elect to choose it five percent increase yes um, and, and basically that's it um, I'm looking for a little bit of direction one of the things I can tell you is some of the other communities in the area um, when they put theirs out for bid Riverview being the most recent they had waste management picking up their trash they bid it here about two and a half three months ago and they saved a hundred thousand dollars over three years by changing contractors um, Flat Rock is using was using waste management they rebid there some time ago and I'm not exactly sure how much money they saved but the low bidder was was the was the low bidder in both of those communities Riverview and Flat Rock what's their name that low bidder uh, Stevenson is their name Stevens Stevens um, they're from Monroe County I think they're down around Petersburg is where they're located um, they've been in business down in that area many years they, they're kind of moving up this direction to to pick up uh, customers but Flat Rock is using them they have no complaints Riverview is now using them and they have no complaints um, so basically it's it, it's up to this commission and the township board is kind of what direction you want to go um, Bill you mentioned something about putting a subcommittee together to review this or well yeah I, I, I have two, two comments first I and I don't know the anything for sure but I heard over the last couple months that both the city of Livonia and Redford Township bid the theirs out and that uh, waste in the case of Livonia they awarded it to waste but they weren't the low bidder okay. um, so I think what we need to do is a little research as to what's taking place in the market but my thought is is we should um, now we don't have a lot of time because what's the notice period for um, well is there I mean, an 120 day notice I mean, no I don't think so um, you don't think so no um, I'd have to look and see if there, there is but if it is something we need to probably get moving forward on if we want to bid this out for a renewal in November we need to have the bids out probably five years, years ago I think Frank Kent headed up a subcommittee on this no I did not would you like to no I would not <laughs> <laughs> all right who would like to promote uh, have a three member subcommittee that uh, I'll do would, it would meet and talk about this well I'll do it okay. I have some comments about the the waste management proposal anyway so. um, and, uh, any other volunteers that would like to serve on the no. subcommittee Jim Bundy yeah thanks thanks guys all right thank you so we have a subcommittee um, what I think we should do is get into this who is the subcommittee, please? Uh, Frank Kent, uh, Wally Posias, and Jim Bundy. And um, Barry, I, I'd like to, this is an important issue for us, so I'd like to have at least a report or an update every month going forward. Sure. And uh, one thing I'd like you to check out is there a notice period in our contract we have to give them? I thought there was something in it. Um, if we, maybe it was if we want to cancel. Maybe that okay. was it, prior to the, um, the expiration of the contract period. But um, another thing is we need to collect data, and I'll, I'll assist in making some contacts and see who's been out there, services, and what the results were. We need to do a survey on that. And I don't understand this uh, fully, the proposal on the recycling they made. You, maybe you can explain that. But while you said you have a question, no, I didn't have a question. I had some comments, and that was one of the areas. Uh, well, go ahead. This is a you know, put out your recycled stuff every week, and at the end of six months, you get an extra large fry. Uh, I'm not impressed with that program. I think that people will, will recycle, and they will recycle if it results in a reduction in their net cost of disposal. But I don't think anybody's interested in. In a rewards program for the empty containers they put out, and that, that's an, a, an opinion that is not solely mine. Many uh, many people I've talked to about since I saw this uh, 
think it's kind of a hinky jinky sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the the other comment that I had is that I remember when we we had to purchase of our waste hauling company buying waste management. Waste management came in with some attempt at a unilateral change in the contract and the type of containers we had. And uh, I see that there are container issues in this proposal too. I think I guess my point is is that if I'm going to be on the subcommittee, we're going to be aiming for a rebid. What well, makes a six hundred thousand dollar contract? Yeah, we we're going to yeah. test the market. We're not going. Yeah. We're not going to just take. And I pretty much indicated that to waste management before they even put this together. That I kind of felt that with the, the folks I've talked to in other communities that I deal with on a regular basis, and when they've bid theirs out, the money savings that they realized um, that it, I could almost assure them that we were probably going to rebid it. So. They, they can't, they're aware of that. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, just a comment. You know, waste management <coughs> took over the contract from Republic, was it? Uh, Capital. Capital, that went out of business. And we need to give credit where credit is due. Our complaint list has virtually disappeared. We don't get any complaints from the people that collect from waste management. And our working relationship with them has been A1 to the time they've collected. But the real issue that remains is that it's a $600,000 contract, and they're proposing a third year increase of 5%, which is a lot of money, it's $33,000. And I just don't think this, that this commission can go forward without at least reviewing the competitors. And I mean, there's a certain risk, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. Our complaint list may get a little bigger, or may not. We don't know. But I think at six hundred thousand dollars to the taxpayers or the on their refuge bill, I think it's imperative that we at least go out and solicit bids. Mm -hmm. I'm sure this bid from waste management will hold fast no matter what. Mm -hmm. That's my comments. Good, Well Yeah, I, the only the only thing that I wanted to say about the complaint list is when we when we had the contract taken over by waste management, the complaint list was no longer coming to our offices. The complaint list was going directly to waste management. So, uh, yeah, we had a reduction to zero, but it was because it was going to somebody else. And I don't know, are we getting any copies or in indication of complaints? No, we occasionally get a call, a complaint, you know, that somebody was missed or something like that, which happens all over. And uh, we usually follow it up with our contact person from waste management, and once we contact them, they take care of the issue. My, my point is, though, that even on our website, our website, our uh, the GITV 12, there's a notice that if you have a complaint, contact waste directly. Yes. You'll never know about your Yes, group. and, and that's, that's by that's well, waste management. Like waste management, that. frankly. Yeah, that's well, the way waste management I, I have a comment to that. This is gross seal. And I'll guarantee you, if somebody's got a problem, we're going to hear about it. We're either going to hear about it at that podium right there, or Barry's going to get a phone call, or I'm going to get a phone call, or you're going to get a phone call. So I really think, I understand what you're saying. I mean, the, the process has changed, but I think the, uh, the difference between waste management and capital, uh, there has been a dramatic improvement. It, I've heard nothing from anybody. I've never heard anybody complain. Uh, once or twice, yeah. but for the most part, no, we, so. we still get a few. But I still think it's a six hundred thousand dollar contract. We got to look at it, and we need to test the market here. I and it's a long term contract. I can't disagree with you. And if that seems to be, if that's a consensus of the commission, we really don't need to form a committee. We can go ahead and move forward with bidding well, it out. I, I'm not sure of that. We need to establish what the subcommittee needs to establish what the bid process is going to be, and they're going to need to review the bids and maybe even act as participants in the interview process. Well, after we take the bids. Is that what the you're saying? process, because they're going to, you're going to want these contractors to come in and talk, right? Well, we'd solicit for bids. And, and who's then going to write up that kind of, who's going to write that big contract? You? Well, we probably would probably use one similar that we have in place now.
Well, the commission, remember when we, five years ago, when we went through the bid process five years ago, we sat down and actually put the contract together ourselves. Well, I would like to see the subcommittee review that, make sure it's going okay. to Okay, that's fine. If we're going in the bid direction, yes, then we can, re that subcommittee can review the bid documents. Well, I agree, and I, and I think, I, th I agree with Ted, and, and, you know, one thing we may want to consider, for example, subcommittee is even having a pre-bid meeting and let people know about complaint issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, I'm already getting phone calls from prospective bidders. I had two today, so that it's out there that you know our contract coming up for renewal. So, sure. are there any other comments on this? I, yeah, it, I, I I tend to agree that the the bid it, it seems like a bid would be uh, would be better only because if you look, you know, they're holding their line, uh, and what you're saying, you know, right. based on your research is. Uh, uh, people are getting a, a, other towns are getting a better break, so uh, they right. actually should be coming to us with a lower right. Loss. And, and I, so when I it seems to be headed that way. Right. And when I mentioned that to them, they said that they would not be in the position to do any price reduction. So, you know, that's uh, pretty you know, much. If it. You understand these large national companies? They're being run out of Chicago, and they're look, they have to perform. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing. The Detroit office waste like any like Republic or Real or any of them. They're trying to perform, mm -hmm. and they don't want to go in reverse. Right. So holding the line in the market might be a good performance measure for them internal to their company. So I think uh, uh, I, I don't think they have the power to go backwards. So I think uh, unless they're, we are out for bid. So. I think they have the power to move backwards. I, it's pretty hard to sell a car for a given price and then try to jack your price up as you go. No, I mean, well, like from the internal relationship within the company. Yeah, that's true. They, 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 they do have pressures on their side, too. Yeah. And so, but if we create the pressure in terms of a bid, then they're faced with a different issue versus just being, because we're nice guys, renegotiating. Mm -hmm. No, I, that I agree on the bid process I, myself. I would like to see a copy of that. That last contract proposal. I can, I can bring I can bring copies of those. document if we could. I can bring All those to committee. the committee meeting. Yes. Okay. So, uh, any further discussion on this issue? So the subcommittee has been created. We're going to have um, this on our agenda going forward as to the progress each month, even if it's a verbal report. And uh, we'll keep that going because November 14th will be here before you know it. Any further comments from anybody? Uh, the next item is a meeting with Wayne County Department of Public Services. For the audience's sake, we, um, we annually have a meeting with Wayne County Public Service Group, and that includes their roads group for Wayne County because as a township, we don't own the roads uh, in Michigan. All the roads, all the roads, neighborhood roads, major roads like Meridian, Gross Hill Parkway, East River, and so forth, they're all owned by Wayne County. If you're a city, you own the roads. So when somebody becomes a city, then all of a sudden the roads are in their jurisdiction. And the cities, like the road commissions, the counties, get a distribution from the state gas fund where the gas taxes are collected to support maintenance of the road system. So anyhow, Wayne County gets money for the roads, we have about 48 miles of roads in, on our island, and uh, Wayne County uh, uh, receives the money for maintenance here. And of course, we're up against competition for how they spend their money uh, every year. So we meet with them annually, and uh, we tried to schedule a meeting in May or early June, and, and not blaming the county, and we were much at fault. We just weren't available. At, to meet at the right times to get all the people together, and there's a lot of them that we want to get together. We're talking about the roads group and the administrative people at Wayne County, our commissioner, Joe Palomero, uh, who's very willing to meet with us uh, and, and try to get everybody together with, with our own commission. So we failed. Um, the, the date that was finally settled on uh, didn't work out. It was supposed to be a morning meeting on uh, June the 18th. A couple of members of our commission were going to be out of town, so so what I ask everybody to do is bring your calendars. If we could pick out a week when everybody's going to be in town. Now let me say this: we traditionally met for lunch. Uh, 
uh, thinking everybody has to eat lunch. So we know that the county officials all have to drive here from where, whether they're downtown or, or out at the airport or wherever they're coming from. Um, and um, uh, that was one thing we've done in the past. Uh, we, we, that that um, could pose problems for us as well. Um, we talked about an afternoon meeting to try to schedule something, and again, they didn't want to pay overtime to anybody if the meeting ran over 4 o'clock, so uh, we uh, got off that idea, and the county proposed, well, how about a morning meeting? We selected 9 o'clock. Uh, I suppose it could meet at 8.30. So if, if I could, we could at least come up with a week, and I, I guess I want to discuss two things. Is everybody okay with a morning meeting? Yeah. If we could plan it ahead of time, and if we could come up with a week when we're all going to be around, Hopefully we could get something together. I'd like to have, you know, all commissioners available if possible. So that is a difficult thing for me to do in the morning. It it's is. Easy, it's easy for me in the afternoons. Later, the better. As a matter of fact, don't hold up anything for me. Well, you're always been a key guy with regard to roads. Mm -hmm. Uh, just in the morning phase. So, well, no, no morning is good for you, even if you had a month's notice. I, I just said that in principle, most of what I have to do today is take care of in the morning, day in, day out. Okay. It's difficult. And, you know, let, let me have a notice. If that's the only thing we can do is a morning meeting, I don't. I guess I don't have a problem. But, I, you know, my morning meeting is 9 o'clock is getting me here all the way downtown and then all the way back here and all the way back downtown again before lunch. Well, you know, why don't well, we make it an early morning meeting? It makes it easier for me. Here's if we're doing so good right now. Well, so, you think it's going to improve for no, now? No, no, no. Oh, we could even propose an 8 o'clock meeting. That, help? that would be fine with me. Okay. So, um, so assuming we're going to need a few weeks' notice, uh, I'm just going to throw out a week, you know, get past the July 4th. What about the week of July 16th? I'm drawing that whole week. Okay. Yeah. 16th. Oh, that's And the week of July 23rd as well? No, no, I'll be back on the morning of the 23rd. Jim, you said what? You're up? No, no, I was just saying that's that's out once you get out of the country. Right. <laughs> are we, are we always trying to make sure that we can get the maximum number of people from Wayne County down here? No, uh, I've only asked for five or six people from Wayne County. And, and they're, they're seeming to have difficulties on matching that. Time. And I can understand that with no, they, reduced counts. But my suggestion to you is, why don't we have a downtown? Go to, the, go to their court. I mean, that's, that's an option. That's an option. We always have uh, found it advantageous to have them out here because either before or after the meeting, we've had a chance to drive some of the key people around and show them some of our issues. I know we did that last year after the meeting. We went out and we had an hour showing some of the county officials what we were talking about. We also had good attendance when we drove them around nine holes of golf, too. <laughs> that, uh, that was an incentive. Oh, it is what it is. Times have changed. Well, week of July 23rd, what do people think about that? Are people looks, around? Looks, uh, looks okay to me. I'm okay from the, the 24th through. Yeah. yeah. We're good. Okay, from Tuesday the 24th on? Correct. Yep. So we're talking Tuesday the 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th. We'll see if we can get something set up. Then you're, you're going to be here then? Yeah. I, I just think it's important to try to have as many of the commissioners. I don't want to exclude anybody. Uh, we'll go for a late afternoon or an early morning, early morning at 8 o'clock. Um, or a late afternoon to them, I suppose. If we met at 2, there's no reason we couldn't get all our business done in two hours. Okay, so that's one issue. So we're going to pick those dates. I just want to go over that again. So that's uh, July 24th through the 27th. The next thing is, is in your packet, um, I, had, I'll, I had put a rough draft together of a proposed 
agenda. Page 45. Um, I, I hope you've all had a chance to look at it. I'm open to any suggested changes or additions to it, changing in the wording. I don't know if you want to do it, the agenda items. Or. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, based on our traffic counts, possibly we could soften uh, uh, number seven on your on your agenda. Uh, I'm not so not so sure that it, it, it's uh, how important it is to go on um, reconstruct Church Road from uh, Meridian West, based on traffic and and what what appears to be happening there. We might might be able to get more uh, more play from them if we were just concentrated on uh, Meridian East. Okay, well, I'm open to... On Church Road. Quite a difference in... Uh, uh, the only reason I added it is because uh, Church Road between Meridian and West River Road is very narrow. Right. And if we're going to widen the other section, we probably should widen it too. And I think the water main crosses... I guess it can be done independently. The water main probably intersects at Meridian. Yes. It doesn't continue it, through. So. It, it, it does go all the way from West River Road. So if your thoughts are, is there concurrence, to just drop uh, the West River Road on church and focus on the other section? Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I believe so. Okay, so we'll drop, um, uh, we'll just say from East River Road then. East River Meridian? Yep. And again, my thought on that is, is I'd like to see the counties get somebody like the chief engineer to work with a, a subcommittee of our group. I mean, whether we don't know when we're going to go and ask for a bond to be approved for fixing church. I don't think it's on the federal aid urban system. Uh, at some point, that we have to get concurrence, get a plan together. What are we going to do to widen it a couple feet? And whatever side you do it on, you got you got a little drainage issue to deal with too. So, uh, and Barry would tell you that any of these roads, when we do them, we have to replace the water main. So, um, I'd like to see us get an action plan together, whether it's two years out or whatever, at least get a plan together or we'll never get any progress made. I've been involved in various developments on Church Road, and I think Barry would We'll say that we've probably been through three or four different uh, regurgitations of one plan or another, and uh, there's always been a uh, an obstruction to that. But when we had the money, we had the obstructions, and now that we don't mm -hmm. have the money, it's easier, right? Yeah, that's uh, the, uh, My point is that uh, the area between uh, Thoroughfare <coughs> and Meridian is an area that really needs desperate work. It, uh, it is the worst and the narrowest of Church Road, and mm -hmm. Church Road is no prize anywhere else, but that area is, is loaded with people moving up and down it. Uh, there are issues with uh, right-of-way. The, the area that I'm looking at is, as I recall, the right-of-way is on the north side of the road, not on the south side. And that puts us into a, uh, an area of a lot of trees, some very old oaks, and there was a, a great affection for those. Yes. Uh, so we had we had proposed in one of these, and I called them regurgitations because that's what they seem to be at mm -hmm. the point. Uh, we had asked for just a, a foot on each side, in in, show, in paved shoulder instead of gravel shoulder. And in the times that were good, Wayne County said no. But now times are not good, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that maybe. Part of your development is going to be a foot on each side there, and that might buy you even more time. And if we can't do the entire church road, that is the worst part of church road, in, in my estimation. And that might be a, you know, can, does it make sense to put a water main and, and fix it that way from thoroughfare? Because that will get you all the way up past the thoroughfare bridge to Meridian. Right. The entire water main on Church Road, it needs to be replaced. I understand that, but I'm asking, does it make sense to do the one segment? Uh, the road portion of it or the water The road main? and the water main portion. Any portion of water main that we replace is a good yes, thing. Okay. I'm just, um, just, just rambling on. It. No, there's a lot of issues there, and 
That's why I'd like to see if, they, if they're agreeable. I'd like to have us get a group together, a subcommittee, and start working on it. You know, I'm sure it'll take a year of a every other month meeting. And I'm ready for subdivision for repair number six. Let's go. <laughs> I'd be glad to be a part of that one. All right. And so would I. Um, okay. So we have an agenda pretty much. Okay. We'll run with that. We have a report that was on your counter desk when you got here tonight from the finance director of the township. And we really haven't had a chance to study it. This is what we ask um, and uh, Darzniak to put together. Uh, we just got it today. Um, the one thing, the second, sec third page in, I would just say um, it, it was put together to show how our water and sewer and building, our DPW building, our debt um, falls off or doesn't fall off. I was a little disappointed. I thought it might fall off a little quicker, and it does. Actually, our total debt peaks in 2018 when you take water debt, sewer debt, and our, our DPW building. And then after 2018, it begins to drop. So, um, anyway, it's something for us to study. I, 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 yes. Would it be possible to have a study session with Ann before our next meeting? Absolutely. And go, and go over all of this with the entire commission? Because there's some... This really only reflects part of our problems on infrastructure. Uh, it points out one of the problems that Barry's brought to our attention an additional problem that Barry's brought to our attention for the water main on Meridian. Uh, as you know, we're in a constant battle with the DEQ with regards to our sewage treatment plant, which at some point in time could add more debt. I think we need to review this thing as a commission because we have to decide is there what direction we're going to recommend to the township board that we move forward with this? And I think it's imperative that everybody understands it. And I, the only person that can explain their numbers is the person that wrote down the numbers. And that would be Ann. And it's it, it's a little confusing. Actually, it's a lot confusing to the layman. Well, Ted, as treasurer, would you uh, set that up? I think it's a great idea. I think prior to our next DPS meeting, we need to sit down for probably an hour with Ann. I don't want to do it in the meeting because uh, I, I don't know that that would be productive. That might even be counterproductive. And then we can bring any recommendations forward. But that give we have several new members on the board or on the commission, and I think it would bring all of them up to date and answer their questions too, because, I mean, I work with these numbers all the time. I was trying to decipher this that Ann brought forward to it, and I'm sure there's explanations for everything here, but I'm having a little bit of trouble deciphering it with, with regards to the sewer debt that we currently have. I'm not sure how much of this debt structure is the state revolving along, or is that in here at all? It should be in there. Should be there. So I, I, think, I think we need to sit down with Ann so that the whole board, the whole commission understands it, and then we can bring <coughs> forward recommendations. If that's okay with you. Oh, absolutely. I think it's a great idea because you don't want to try to go through all these numbers. We have pages of numbers here. So uh, what I'm asking if you would help coordinate that with. Mark, well, with if you say yes, it's done. <laughs> you, you know, I, I say yes. What does the commission say? I retract my statement I just made. This may not reflect right, so them because there's a millage you put through on the bond issue. And, and that's my issue. Yeah. I, you, you're but probably right. But going forward from here, we may mm -hmm. not have that latitude. Right. But that debt is also a part of the exactly. combined debt of the township. And we need to look at all of this so all of us understand yep. what we're committing the township to mm -hmm. with regards to debt going forward. Right. Because I, you think you're right. I don't. This, I don't think that's in. I don't either. Yeah. Great. There's a consensus among everybody shaking their heads that they're all in agreement. 
Oh, yes. Ted, so you'll. Uh, so our next meeting will start at 6:30 instead of 7:30. The 6:30 portion of it will be a a, uh, a meeting with just the commission and Ann, and then we'll go right into our 7:30 meeting. That meeting will be open to the public if anybody wants to sit in on it, of course, but it will not be televised. As far as the exact time, too, why don't we just leave it up? We'll, we'll do it per before our next meeting. We might decide to, have to meet at 6. Okay? Uh, Let, let's just say we're going to meet prior to our next meeting. All right. Whatever. Yeah, that's fine. We might throw some additional items in there for having a study session. That's fine. Okay? Lorinda, it's on your shoulders. Thank you. Okay, we're under action items. Uh, 2012 road repairs, concrete bid award. Barry? Uh, yes, as you recall earlier, um, well, going way back when the, when the commission did their road survey, we went around and surveyed the condition of the different portions of the road in the township. Um, <clears throat> as a result of that, um, we were instructed to put a bid package together to do some road repairs on the concrete roads as well as some of the asphalt roads. Um, so what you have before you here tonight is the bid results for the concrete portion of the road repairs as well as the asphalt portions. Uh, the bid was, uh, I think, accepted on June the 5th, and the bids were tabulated by our engineering company, CE Rains, and you will see attached to these um, recommendations their letter of um, recommendation to for these bid awards. Okay, you've all had a chance to look at this. Um, questions? I'll make the motion. I will second it. All right, it's been moved and supported that we recommend the Township Board to award a bid to GV Cement Contracting Company the lowest bidder in the amount of $117,525 for the 2012 Concrete Pavement Repair Program. Do we have history on this GB? Um, I can tell you what I know about them. Uh, they've been around a long time. Um, reputable company. Barry? Yeah. Uh, you know, just looking at these, uh, and uh, maybe you can educate me on, on how this all goes. I. Uh, I realize the lowest bid, but uh, it, just in looking through the various things, is there ever any discussion or explanation as to why, uh, for instance, uh, one one bidder is fifteen dollars on a unit and somebody else is thirty dollars on that that same thing, or where there's wide variances? What we're getting, I mean, before it seems to me before we can uh, really say this is a good bid, we got to know what we're getting. And is there any is there any way to ask that question or um, do you just that, that is a good that same? is a good question and and basically what I, all I can tell you is is yeah there is a lot of difference in each bidder's bid on different line items but they're all based on the quantities in the left hand column so in other words if take the first one on page forty eight at the top GV cement. The estimated quantity is 2,250 square yards. Right. Everybody bids that quantity. Okay, so so we're we're assuming everybody's it's apples to apples. Yes. And so if one guy's five and another guy's fifty, it's still apples to. Apples. It's still apples to apples. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Well, and Jim, if you look at page fifty, and you're asking a good question, but I've been around this long enough to know. I think Ted would comment too, particularly on road construction though. It's how serious and how busy they are. Mm -hmm. So they inflate these unit prices where they think they can make money. And the other thing that contractors will do is where they, if they were to get the job, where they could perhaps probably get additional units based on the units that are bid that might put more money in their pocket. And it could be whatever unit price they bid. I thought, well, if we end up doing a good job, we get extra work out of them. That's where we're going to make our money. Mm -hmm. So you look at the variance here. The low bid was one hundred seventeen thousand. This is page fifty, right? And the second company listed is two hundred seventy-seven thousand. It's well over double. 
and it, it's the only one that's at 277. So you have to assume they're busy already. Okay. They're, they're just throwing right. in a bid and a chance they might get something, or somebody made a mistake. But I had a question on a company that's based in Gross Hill I've never heard of before, Pavex Corporation out on Hawthorne Glen. I assume that that's where somebody bidding out of their home. I have no idea. Did you ever hear of Pavex Corporation? No, I before? have not. I noticed they bid on the asphalt work too. Yeah, I have not. And they were second or third on that. But at any rate, um, the one question I have, and I guess it just takes sitting down with Sahil, they came up with, we gave them the list of where we wanted to spend so much money, and uh, they went out and measured the areas and came up with the number of cubic feet to be replaced, or the linear feet, square footage in the case of asphalt. Mm -hmm. And so I assume that uh, no, uh, at some point I want to make sure that we're covering everything we wanted to. Okay. The other question I have is if the, I don't know if these bids are good, the unit prices are below what we, we thought, they would be. Um, we'll have to go back and check our notes. My point is, is, are we able to do more work than we had originally thought based on this? Well, there again, like I say, the, these bids are put together so we can, we can add or eliminate to this contract as, as the commission sees fit. In other words, it's a unit price bid. If we want to do 2,000 square feet, we pay for 2,000 square feet. If we want to do 3,000 square feet, we pay for 3,000 square feet. If we want to do 1,000, we pay less. So it's uh, we can we, we can now go around to the areas that we that the commission chose that they wanted to take care of. Now we can actually put a number to those areas now that we have this unit price document in front of us. I, I didn't go back and check my notes. I have them someplace at home. But if you add the two together, the 94000 for the asphalt work, and I know we're concentrating on the cement, and this, it seems to me that we were talking about about $160,000 worth of repairs. I don't know if you remember that or not. That's the figure that registers in my head. And what we've got here is literally um, $214,000 worth of repairs. Mm -hmm. you understand my question? Yeah, I, I understand your question, yeah. I. I in other words, we had made a decision that we were going to um, try to cap it at about 160000 for this year and see what that gets us. So okay. I well. just wanted to call that to your attention as we go forward. Sure. All right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We could. This bid was based on numbers that we gave Sile. He put a bid package together yes. for these contractors to bid. Now, all of these contractors, I'm assuming from this, that we gave the the areas that we picked equal 2,250 mm -hmm. square feet. Right, and that would have been Rains's obligation to set that. Well, amount. they did that because they mm -hmm. put out the bid package. Right. So we can assume that if he did his job right, which right, we will assume that he did. Right. Then this is what we ask him to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that should be everything that we had marked down on that bid on that bid sheet from Ohio from our drive-through. Everything should be covered here. Right. Well, I think you know from my recollection of the list, we said, well, we'll spend thirty thousand here or twenty thousand here or whatever. And uh, I'm just wondering how we're going to correlate those two. Yeah, but when we did that, we had no idea how much it was going to cost to do that specific amount. True. Well, well, if if we don't know, I assume that this is all of the areas that we gave Ohio. Is that correct? Yeah, I would assume so, because we went around. Because if it's not, then I think we're going about this the wrong way. Right. Well, we did give him a list of areas that we wanted done, and he probably he visited those areas and probably did some measuring to determine what these units prices were. Can we assume that before we pass these? Yeah, I. Or should we wait? Uh, well, I don't think we should wait. Why don't we pass it, and, and I'll be, maybe Ted, you and I can make sure that, that they correlate. A lot of the areas that we visited, you know, through our drive-through. I mean, as we drove, we said, well, here's an area that we'd like to have fixed. And they went out and probably measured that up and determined what that was to put this bid package together. We, as a commission, were not very, not real specific. We just, there's an area that we want taken care of. 
you know, measure it up, make sure it's covered for bid purposes. Very well, we were specific. Yeah. We, we put a dollar amount to a list. That's right. And it was, my recollection is it was $160,000. Right. Now, if we, we knew we could be short, we could be over or short. Um, so I guess I would like to see, um, and so he was, from his notes, Okay. maybe a couple of us could just check that with you, uh, make sure we're, I'm sure we're concentrating in the areas. The question I'm asking is, are we getting, is this costing us much more, it looks like it's costing us much more than we thought it was going to. And that's very possible. Uh, well, it seems to me that I was not on the road trip, but I remember the conversation from the meeting later that uh, your $150,000, $160,000 was an allocation of the amount of funds that we had available in our roads repair budget and this additional uh, four tenths of a mil. And that it was like two hundred and twenty five or two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of which we had said what, what it was two hundred and twenty five thousand. Yeah, okay. I, I remember the two twenty five or two fifty. Mm -hmm. And and that comment was let's get the bid for what these things that we want to have done and if we don't have enough money to do it then we'll do some of them. And we'll allocate as a board. So I, I don't think we're in a, we're in a problem situation. Um, no, it's, it's, it's a matter of uh, if this did come in higher and it doesn't cover everything that we want done, then we're going to have to decide. Next year. Well, what, the bids are already in. The bids are in, but, but we're going to govern how much of it is well, spent. The bids are unit price. We have decided That's right. we were going to spend 30 and spend 10. Yep. Um, yeah. And I guess I would like to see that list. Of how we're going to correlate the two. I can get that. I'll we get some. And, um, okay. I guess we'll have to spend a little time on that. Okay. So these two these two projects are going to comprise two hundred and twelve thousand dollars. If we give them both to the low bidders, and we were going to set aside the additional money for the the normal routine maintenance, well, snow removal, dust control. So we were going to set aside some of these funds for the cell court. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know how much, but I remember talking about it. We we need to. Well, why don't we make the award because it's the contract before it's actually signed, which would be two weeks from now, Ted. Yeah. To the board. Is that right? Yes. yes. Uh, I'll. Uh, Ted, can I? Is it okay with the commission since Ted's here? If I. Work with Ted and Barry to be with the engineers to make sure we, sure. we're sure. at least we know where we're going with this. Sure. Because I don't think we should hold up the award because we need to get the improvements going. And um, actually, since you know, and I brought this up before on the concrete repairs, I had brought up uh, we need a couple slabs on um, on Gray's Drive because of the high school traffic that we didn't. Notice them on grays, but there's a couple areas that I think are deteriorating between Park Lane and the high school. That, you know, maybe four, eight slabs. That we need to yeah, them. right. And, and Jim and I w took a drive and looked at a couple areas that he had concerns over too that okay. were concrete roads. So you know, there again, it's how much you want to do. All right. Okay. With that discussion, we have a recommendation and we have a motion. On the cement contracting award to GV Cement, um, in spite of my questions, if there are no other questions, I recommend that we uh, vote on awarding, making this recommendation. No other questions? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Next item, Barry. Next item is the um, road repairs, the asphalt portion bid award. Motion to recommend to the Township Board to award bid to Al's Asphalt Paving Company, lowest bidder in the amount of $94,531 for the 2012 asphalt pavement repair based on the recommendation of the Charles E. Raines Company Township Engineers. And there again, basically the history is basically the same as the concrete road. Uh, we drove around, looked at areas that need uh, asphalt replacement, and the bid package was put together based on that. We have history on Al's. Oh, uh, yes. They've been around a long time, yeah. too. I'll so. make a motion. Second. 
who supported that we recommend to the town to support the award to Al's Asphalt Paving, the lowest bidder in the amount of $94,000, well, $94,531, for the 2012 Asphalt Pavement Repair Program based on the recommendation of our township engineers. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? That's been approved. Next item, Barry. The last item on the action item is the wastewater treatment plant, RBC Drive and Driven Sprockets. Uh, this is a project that is on our capital improvements uh, schedule for this fiscal year. Um, I'll, I'll read the motion. Uh, motion to recommend to the Township Board to approve the purchase for replacement of the RBC Drive and Driven Sprockets in the amount of $29,982. This is a single source item, um, and there's approximately a thousand dollar freight charges for this material. Um, I'm going to ask Joe to come up to the podium, and he can he can better explain than I what this uh, repair is all about. Hi, Joe. Why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Joe Keefe. I'm superintendent of the wastewater plant. Been here since 1988. Uh, right when these RVCs were installed. Um, what we got are... Mr. Chair, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Joe. Aren't we supposed to make a motion to second this before we discuss it? Is this information? We can. Yeah. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion to recommend to the Township Board to approve the purchase for replacement of the RBC Drive and Driven Sprockets in the amount of $29,982. This is a single source plus approximately $1,000 for freight charge. That's the motion, and uh, that would need a second, and I have a question. Second. What is the RBC? We didn't know that I last time. I, I, I know. <laughs> the RBCs are uh, rotating biological contactors. Thank you. Secondary treatment, it's the biological treatment portion of the wastewater treatment process. They're 25 foot long by 12 foot high plastic media on a rotating shaft driven by a five horsepower motor that's geared down to a small sprocket, the drive sprocket, and we have a big heavy duty chain that goes on the driven sprocket which is about six feet in diameter. And these things run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they've been running since November of 1988, nonstop. And there's excessive wear on the sprockets and the chains. So uh, this is a single source. The chains are a multi-source thing. It's a common chain. But these are, you know, it's pretty specific um, equipment. <clears throat> so that's what it is. This, by the way, is the um, parts portion of this job. We uh, Rains is putting together an RFP to go out to do the to solicit quotes to do the labor portion of it. This is the purchase of the the equipment to actually goes in the plant. But it's kind of this is going to be kind of a twofold uh, project. Um, the, I imagine this is difficult work to install these because I've seen them, um, right? Yes. Um, how long does it take to get the parts once we order? I think, I think there's a two month lead time on that. Yeah. I, I mean, some of them are available to ship, not I think five of them are available to ship, but it's two months for the other five. I think several of us have been there and actually seen the parts and how they operate and the problems you've had. But those who haven't can always make arrangements to go and make the tour. Right. And right. Phil, since you're a newest member, and Jim, I think you and I have been there. Yeah. Yep. the plant. Yep. Uh, maybe Frank might take uh, you over there someday and arrange <laughs> through Joe to do a tour of the wastewater plant. It's always good to go there and know what we're talking about, or at least say you've been there. Yeah. I don't know that we ever know what we're talking about on, on the wastewater <laughs> plant. Ted does, but... Uh, and it's complicated mechanical equipment, and uh, that's a complicated process. So but it's nice to have them laying there in case one breaks. Yeah, <laughs> and they have broken. So. Well, that was yeah in the late '80s. Before I got here, two shafts broke, 
and it was a defective shaft. They, there was some lawyer out of Wisconsin who tracked that down, and the township negotiated a pretty good deal to get all 10 RVCs replaced back in 1988. Well, my point was having the sprockets here in case of a, you know, we wouldn't have a long lead time in case one Right, fail. right. And you can, you can be a little more leisurely about soliciting installation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Just a question, Joe. The bearings on these, are they local? The bearings are, no, they were from the same source. We, are, we already have those. In we the have process. those in stock. We're, as we get time, we're uh, replacing the bearings. What we're finding, though, is every jur shaft journal <coughs> is worn. Yep. And if you recall, about a year and a half ago, we paid $38,000 to get them welded, built back up, and then ground back down. The last couple, we've been trying a titanium epoxy. Mm -hmm. um, we seem to have, with the last one, perfected the process. The process because our one we had, the first one we had, I think it was on, in October, we just had experienced a failure with that epoxy. But it was the injection process that uh, we think we perfected now. So. <clears throat> We're, uh, we just did one and now we're going to go and redo this one. You know, we caught this before the bearing had any issues. Are these split hubs or are they solid bearings where you got to pull everything off and put the bearing on it? They're, yeah, solid bearings. Okay. Yeah. Joe, um, it might be a good idea, and I, I think it's pretty simple. If you could take a photograph or two of the bearings, the chains, and what they look like so that when it comes to the township board in two weeks you have a photograph that you can distribute to them or a photograph yeah. or two mm -hmm. at least they will have yeah sure. idea I'll, of, I'll take some pictures of what I'll it looks like and then also yeah. not just the the uh, apparatus itself but what it looks like in concert in the room that it's in the chains yeah no I'll, I'll i'll take a couple pictures of them and then shoot them to lorinda and she can <laughs> Distribute them to whoever puts those packets together. Thanks, Joe. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, so that, that um, takes care of uh, the formal part of our agenda. Uh, we need to vote on this. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, we've, we've had a presentation, we've had a motion. There's any further questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the purchase of the wastewater treatment plant of the replacement parts for the RBC drive and driven sprockets in the amount of $29,982, a single source, plus approximately $1,000 for freight. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 The post? Thank you. Now we're at the time for public comment, and the public that was here uh, left our meeting, so uh, I have no additional items to report. I've talked enough tonight, and uh, we'll go around the table. We'll start, Ted? No, nope, nothing. All right. Quick question: Anything on the cleaning and retreating the bridges over the? No, but I'm getting that bid package around. No. Yep. So we'll Next time. Yep, I can give you some. Frank. I'll be able to give you an update, but I'll probably have it up for bid. Nothing. Phil. Nothing. 